thank you thank you for both agreeing to come and speak on uh not the andrew mar show uh well i'm really happy with for the first time uh fiona edwards from no cold war is, is joining us thank you fiona great to be with you and Heiko Ku as well has come back. Uh, he's been on before, a journalist uh, with China.org CN, and who has a doctorate in Chinese political economy. The reason I would like you both to speak on, on this discussion is I've just been picking up these stories. Uh, this is in the Daily Telegraph on Monday, and it says um, Sunak. China's security threat will define era. Prime Minister to draft in spies to thwart hackers and protect the British economy from Beijing. So as well as this kind of spies and economy story, then we've got this one double up on subs fleet, Sunak urged, and we've got the AUKUS agreement uh, of, of, by, of making submarines for Australia specifically uh, because of the so-called Chinese threat. Fiona, why should the economic threat of China mean that we've got to start getting submarines out there? They just don't seem to be the same thing. Why can't we just grow the economy? Well, it, you know, the Western mainstream media is just turning reality on its head. I mean, China is no threat um, to the security of Britain, Australia or the United States. The, the exact opposite is the case. This AUKUS military pact is targeting China. And it's part of a huge US-led military buildup in the Pacific against China. I mean, you've got um, Japan doubling its military spending at the behest of the United States. That's what they're pushing for. The US already has 400 military bases surrounding China, and it's just agreed to have another four in the Philippines. And this is the, the project of the United States is to contain China, to military encircle China. And the goal is to stop the peaceful rise of China. And just this point on, on the economy, I mean... China is one of is the world's most dynamic, um, one of the fastest growing economies in the world. And the idea that cooperating with China, having uh, trade, investment, et cetera, is, is a threat to Britain. I mean, it's the opposite. Um, going along with this Cold War agenda is actually going to make the economic situation in the West even worse. Um, you know, you've got um, rising inflation, really low growth, um, a massive cost of living crisis, living standards are falling um, by the largest extent since 1950s. And you've got China, which we could cooperate with on a whole range of issues from infrastructure to climate change, et cetera, et cetera. And instead, you've got this colossal amount of money being spent on the military. Um, it's, all, it's increasing in Britain, but also you're um, shunning away a dynamic potential economic partner. So you know, the, the Western media coverage is completely ludicrous. It just turns reality on its head. Uh, I Aiko, what, what, what do you think about this uh, this whole economic threat argument? I mean, I, why why should that be something that's that, that the West would be so fearful of? For the same reasons that they were fearful for a period of time of the Soviet Union, um, the Soviet Union constituted a different socio economic system, and China, despite what many people believed for a few decades. Um, has actually consolidated its public sector dominated economy and extended the reach of the public sector dominated economy and the influence of that economy around the world. And through what they had a, a, a huge project, I mean, many times larger than the Marshall Plan for global economic integration, which would benefit the majority of the countries which had always been left behind by Western-backed imperial countries um, in Africa, in Asia, in South America. And they have been non-political investments. And so projects like high-speed railways, infrastructure projects, um, uh, exchanges between states, which, for example, they might build schools, hospitals, road, roads, railways in exchange for uh, natural resources. They were presented by Western imperialist uh, representatives as a new type of Chinese imperialism. And in actual fact, they were generally beneficial and advantageous to the countries that were engaging in this cooperation. And the consequence of that was that the Americans have felt that if China was able to integrate 
large parts of the world, even if it was just a third of the world, but or, 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 or some people say already 60% of the world is sort of integrated with Chinese economy, then it undermines the long historical trajectory of the dominance of Western imperialism over the seas and over yeah. world trade. And for that reason, it is, I mean, or, or, although everything Fiona has said is right, it is from the standpoint of US imperialism, a kind of an existential threat. You know, they're no longer going to be the big player who dominates the whole world and shapes the whole world. And it is certainly true that 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 in the past China held back from doing things which might upset the global dominance of the United States, at least overtly. Whereas now they they do feel a bit more confident. That, that is true. Not that 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 is doing anything negative, but it but it but it is creating a sense of um, that America feels it, it has some kind of existential threat on its uh, uh, facing it. Uh, that is existential to its global dominance. Right. Uh, so what, what do you think of that, uh, Fiona? Yeah, I mean, I completely agree with what's just been said. I mean, it's not a threat to the people um, in the West. You know, we've got a huge amount to gain through cooperating with China, you know, you know, all the salute, you know, they're a leader in renewable energy, you know, that'd be fantastic to have a green revolution in Britain and the United States and Europe, which why not cooperate with the world leaders on that? They're the leaders in renewable energy. So it makes sense to work with them. But instead, the United States wants sanctions on it. I mean, it's it's ludicrous. And, and like you say, you know, instead of focusing on you know where we can cooperate, um, all it is, is just a kind of day by day, drip, drip, drip approach of China's the enemy, China's the threat. And I think what's been said, you know, the threat is only to a, you know, a tiny, tiny, tiny elite who want to dominate the world, which, by the way, isn't very democratic. That's actually called a global dictatorship. And, you know, and this, the, you know, the United States has been responsible for countless coups, proxy wars all over the world. But a lot of countries in the global south are, you know, do want to have win-win cooperation with China. They're, they're completely against this whole no Cold War um, narrative, and they're not going along with it. So I think, you know, we, 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 whilst there is like a blanket... Um, anti-China coverage in the media because obviously the you know the media is owned by billionaires. Um, the, the case is that internationally, people in the global south and governments in the global south want to cooperate with China, and I think that in, it's in the interest of the British people and other countries in the West to cooperate with China because they genuinely do not want to have a war. They don't want a cold war. They definitely don't want a hot war. Um, it's really important that we understand it's the United States that wants this. Because there's all of this attempt is trying to say China wants a war. Nothing could be further from the truth. Uh, I, Heiko, do you think that the that they're trying to will there be a, a clash in tai, Taiwan? Is it is this where we're heading? You know, that seems to me if, if we're looking at Ukraine, that was where they found a clash there. Are they looking to find a place of a, another proxy war down there? Do you think? I mean, the Americans know very well that the the one red line of all red lines for the Chinese is Taiwan. So if any attempt is made to increase, significantly increase military or diplomatic support or so on in support of Taiwan, then the Chinese might feel that they have no option but to, but to take Taiwan militarily. I don't think that's the most likely option um, because the social support in Taiwan is not there for that. Uh, the Taiwanese, yes, they don't support the idea that they are just part of China, but a significant number, 30, 40% think they are Chinese and Taiwanese. And the, the, the number who think they're just Taiwanese has fluctuated over a long period of time. There is no fixed stability to that. However, the United States has a number of areas where they're sort of focusing on. I would suggest that the one issue is uh, chip technology, which the Taiwanese are the leading producer of. And the Chinese are trying to create an area in the south of China, which will replace that dominance by Taiwan. And the Americans might feel they're losing a foothold there. And the other area is space. Uh, competition in space, which I suppose is the is the symbolism of, of the balloons. Um, it's actually the Western powers, in particular Elon Musk, whose space technology is occupying 
uh, the surrounding of, of, of lower Earth space. And, and it means that other countries can't launch satellites which can function in space because the whole area is clouded and occupied by American or American corporate uh, satellites. And so the Chinese obviously have an interest in preventing that. It's, it's in every domain that the Chinese are, are, are considered to be at war with the Americans. I mean, I saw, it, it, I watched all the discussions of the Committee for the Current Danger China, which was previously the Committee for the Current Danger Russia, and they changed it a few years back into Committee for the Current Danger China. And there were discussions there with these pseudo academics who are close to the State Department and get funding for them and so on. And they were talking about 5G technology, which is the whole Huawei issue, and saying that the Chinese will use your toaster as a weapon of war because they'll be able to access uh, chips and, uh, and the on off button for your toaster and burn your house down while you're out. And it's the same story with TikTok. The British government have just banned TikTok from government uh, devices. Now, it's not a, I'm not a particular fan of TikTok, but the idea that TikTok is some kind of weapon of war is just the most bizarre angle possible. The other uh, more dangerous uh, uh, element, which I think does have a significant degree of psychological penetration into the minds of the masses, is the idea that the that COVID originated from Wuhan in 2019. And uh, this has been an ongoing story since the very, very beginning. Um, the BBC was in on it, although they make out they were suppressed. On the contrary, the BBC, I remember seeing pictures very early on of them standing outside the Wuhan lab and saying, the secrets are here, the secrets are here, the secrets are here. And that's been ongoing. And now the House of Representatives and the House and the Senate all voted to demand that all the information comes out. I mean, I don't have anything against all the information coming out. But the idea is that they're trying to say that this originated from China and turn the world's population who've suffered from all the measures taken over the last couple of years or three years against the Chinese people uh, in the name of, oh, look, they did this to us. If there seems to be an instinctual thing in some people to regard Chinese as other and separate and different and, and therefore the enemy somehow.